Duchesses and Dukes of Data, it's Prof G. Are you ready to meet the delete and become charming champions of the checkbox? Well, in this lesson, we're going to learn to swipe to delete data using Swift Data, and we'll also update data by simply tapping to toggle a bool value on or off. Giddy up, folks. We've got a date with big learning. So let's open up our to-do list app from the prior lesson. And if you're new here, welcome. But you'll likely want to start with earlier lessons in the playlist so that you have the code that we're working with now and so that you'll understand how we got here. Now you can find the entire playlist at bit.ly slash prof-g dash swiftui, all lowercase. For everyone else, why don't we start at this point by adding an app icon and our launch screen to our app. So I'm going to open the Project Navigator, open the Asset Catalog, and click on App Icon. Then I'll open a browser and head to bit.ly slash prof-g-swiftui-files. You've been there before. We're working on the to-do list project, so find the folder named to-do list files and right-click on that and select download. Yours is probably downloading the downloads folder. Mine's already downloaded to the desktop. Open that folder up. And I'm going to click and drag the file name to do list icon 1024 by 1024 and drag that over into Xcode. Command tab will bring me over there. Then I'll plop it in the Any Experience box. I don't have a darker tinted icon. If you want to make one yourself, feel free to. Then I'll head back to the finder in the folder that I just downloaded and I'm going to highlight all three of these files that are to do list launch screen. Drag them over and drop them in the left hand column in the asset catalog. We can see that they're all grouped together as a 1x, 2x, and 3x image. Then to get that image to show as our launch screen, let's open up our project navigator. Click on the topmost icon, which is the project icon. Then in the tabs across the top, find and click on info. This brings up your property list. In the key column, find the launch screen row and click on the expansion arrow so it points downward. Then click a plus sign underneath this so that you can find and select image name. And I forget what the image name is. I'm just going to copy that from the finder. So I'll head back over to where my files were. I'll highlight this first one here. It's called to do launch screen.png. If I press return on it, command A selects all the letters, command C copies them, command tab back over to Xcode. I'm going to double click in the value column over here and command V to paste in that file name. Now let's head back to the to do list view and I'm going to press on the play icon to build and run. Hammer time. Here's our launch screen. And if I click on the home button, the simulator, I can see our app icon is there as well. Nice. So one thing I want to enable is to swipe left and delete an item in our to-do list. Swipe to delete is currently not enabled. Let me show you how to do that. It is super easy. First, I'll head back to Xcode, click the square up top to stop the simulator, and I'll restart my preview on my canvas. Now we want to enable swipe to delete on every individual item that's inside of our for each statement. So inside for each, after the close and curly in our navigation link, I'm going to do this just below dot font dot title two. I'm going to enter dot swipe actions. I get this option here, select it, press return for the trailing closure format. And I want to put a button in here and I want the button to have a title key, a role and an action. And unfortunately it's not showing up right away. This is probably an error in my version of Xcode, but I notice sometimes if I backspace over button and I type again, there we go. We can see we've got those three options in code completion. So let's see what this does. For the title, it's going to be delete, tab over to roll, press period. We get some options in here and what we want is destructive. That's going to make the button red. Then tab over to action, press return for trail enclosure format, and I'll start to type in model context. And look at this, via predictive code completion, Xcode is guessing that I want to say dot delete on a to-do item. You're correct, Xcode. So I'm going to press tab to accept this. And really that's all I need to do to delete a to-do item when I swipe, but I am going to run into the same concern that I had previously. Data should be updated perfectly on the iPhone, but I notice that if I run in the simulator, it doesn't force a save when I quit out of my simulator right away. Let's see this in action. Build and run. Hammer time. Looking good. I'm going to swipe left on Teach Species Swift because I'm done teaching Swift for the week. And look at this, we see a button appear over on the right and it's red. That's what that dot destructive role did for us. If we click this button, we see that row goes away, but it doesn't seem to be saving automatically, which is the default in Swift UI. If we quit out of the simulator, I just quit. Make sure I press my stop simulator square button. Then I'm going to press the play button again. And look at this, we still have our teach BC Swift in here. It did not delete that data persistently. But from a prior lesson, we know how to fix that. We can force a save right underneath the model context dot delete. So I'm going to start to type in guard and look at predictive code completion says model context dot save else return. Now that's not quite what I want. So I'm not going to take predictive code completions guess here. And the reason for that is that save might throw an error. So we need to involve try instead. I'm going to say guard 
let underscore equals try question mark. But as I start to type model context, I can see once again, predictive code completion is saying, hey, I bet you want to do a dot save else curly braces return. I do. I'm going to type tab to accept this. And then I'm going to put my closing curly brace and my return on a separate line because I want to put a print statement to print out the fact that I got an error just above the return here. I'll say print angry emoji error colon save after dot delete on to do list view did not work now let's build and run again hammer time no problem i'm gonna swipe left again on bc swift we get that lovely red delete button click that then once again i'll quit out of the simulator click my square to stop any simulator code that was running click the play button again hammer time once again and now i see the teach bc swift that i swiped left on was deleted persistently Beauty! Now, Swipey Swifters, I want to show you another technique that you can use to delete Swift data data that's inside of a for each statement. And this uses the dot on delete modifier. Dot on delete works with for each, but the reason that I didn't show you this first is because when Swift data was first released, this technique didn't work reliably. Now it seems that both of these techniques work fine. The one I'm about to show you uses this cool dot on delete modifier. And you can also use the onDelete modifier outside of the Swift data world, so I thought it was worth introducing. So this jump cut is just to show you this alternative code. You can use either one. I'm going to continue the lesson using the swipe actions modifier that I just showed you. But so that you know about onDelete, I'm going to highlight and delete all of the swipe actions modifier now. Now a key difference is onDelete is a modifier for for each. So it needs to be outside the closing curly of the for each, not inside the curlies like our swipe actions was. And let's enter dot on delete. Code completion says that this sets the delete action for the dynamic view. Select this. Press return for the trail enclosure. Depending on how moody Xcode is, it may or may not include a perform argument label here. Now it's asking us for an index set. And an index set is an array of indices that we've selected. So here we're only swiping on a single item. So our index set is going to include only one element in its array. We're only deleting one item at a time. But you've probably seen apps with user interfaces where you can put check marks next to multiple items and then delete all of them at once. That's the purpose of the index set. The code we're going to write would work for both alternatives. But first, we got to name this index set. So we're going to call our index set lower camel case index set with a capital S in there. And in the closure, what we want to do is go through all the elements in the index set. And we're going to use a for each method for this. So we'll say lower camel case index set dot for each. Remember this guy with functional programming? It's like a one line for loop. And inside of its parens, we'll say open curly brace it adds a closing curly brace and we're going to use the dollar sign zero shorthand to access the individual elements in the index set so between those curlies we'll say model context dot delete select the option that wants the model well to get the element that we just swiped we're going to say go to to do's lower camel case and between square brackets we'll pass in dollar sign zero that gets an individual element we swiped because we're using for each it'll go through all the elements in the index set that's it it handles the swipe and the deletion but as has become our custom we're also going to add the guard statement to automatically push out any changes that is guard let underscore equals try question mark model context dot save else open and close curlies and we'll print angry emoji error save after dot delete in to do list view did not work make sure you got your return in there i'll demonstrate in the preview this works perfectly you can add a few items swipe to delete you should find this works fine and if you try it in the simulator you'll find that data is persistent as well but i'm going to return now to the code that we'd used previously using the swipe actions Jump cut done. Now let's up our interface game by adding a checkbox that we can toggle from not completed to completed, just to the left of our to-do item in our to-do list view. Now in order to show this checkbox to the left of the to-do list item, I'm gonna use an H stack and we'll have a checkbox to the left of the navigation link. That'll be on the right hand side and that's where we display the to-do item. So I'm gonna two finger click on navigation link and the quick action menu has an option to embed in H stack. I'll select that. The navigation link and all of its modifiers are now embedded in an H stack, nice. Now above the navigation link is the first item in the H stack. I'm gonna add an image view and it's gonna use a built-in symbol. So I'm gonna select the option with system name. The symbol I'm gonna use is rectangle. Now I can't see it off to the right, so I'm gonna enter a quick to-do that just says my to-do and look at that, we see our rectangle. 
Now in order to make my symbol the same size as the font that I'm using, I'm gonna cut out the font.title2 below the navigation link, and I'm gonna put that below the entire H stack so everything's in title2 font. I'm gonna double click on the open curly for the H stack so that I know where the closed curly is. Paste that .font.title2 in there. And this isn't quite what I want. I want the rectangle to show when the to-do is not completed, but if the to-do is completed, I wanna put a checkbox in that rectangle. So the way that I'm gonna accomplish this is gonna be with a ternary operator. I'm gonna delete the string rectangle in here and instead what I'm going to say is to do dot is completed question mark. Now remember to do dot is completed is going to be either true or false. After the question mark is what we do if it's true. Xcode predictive code completion makes a guess that I want check mark doc circle dot fill and circle in here. I don't. Instead if this is true I want the symbol so I'll put in the string check mark dot rectangle but if it's false I'll say colon and then enter rectangle in here that's the empty rectangle. Now let's quick enter a to-do named item one. Then I'll click on that to-do and change its completed entry to completed by clicking on this toggle. Click save. And look at that. When that element has an is completed as true, we get a check mark to the left of the to-do item name. Nice. If I click on the item again to edit it and then turn is completed off and save, I can see that the check mark goes away. Now that's cool, but what I'd really like to do is also be able to click on the box to toggle the check mark on or off right here in the to-do list that lists all of my to-dos. Well, let's do that. Under the image view, the ternary operator I just created, we'll enter a dot on tap gesture. Select this option with just the code. We get the trailing closure format here. And all we want to do in here is toggle. So if I start to type in to do dot, it looks like predictive code completion has got this right. Tab to accept this line to do dot is completed dot toggle. And look down below. It recognizes that I've made a change in to do. And so I probably want to go ahead and save that change with the guard let statement I entered earlier. What's curious is it even changed save after dot toggle on to do list view. Frankly, I'm not sure if it recognized some earlier code that I wrote when I was trying out different options for this lesson, or if it genuinely knew that this is what I wanted to put in here. If you have different results, it's probably because my Mac has seen this line of code in this position before. Either way, this is exactly the code that I want. So I'm going to tab to accept this. But let's enter a to-do item so we can try out that new toggle. And ooh, it looks like the preview isn't working. It's not letting me type in the preview canvas. It's just typing in my editing area. Unfortunately, that canvas quirkiness happens from time to time, but no big deal. We can just press the play button to build and run in the simulator. Hammer time, looking great. Now I had teach physical computing check. Let's click on this check mark and look at that, we toggle it off. I'll toggle that back on and I'll toggle off learn Swift data. And actually I'm gonna toggle that back on because we just learned Swift data, folks. I'll click off teach physical computing again. And let's add a new to-do. How about tattoo removal with Pete Davidson? I'll set a reminder for next Wednesday from our current time. And I'll do that at 6.15 p.m., save it. This is looking good. And when this is done, I can just tap this rectangle. It turns into a check mark and is completed, should be set to true. Just to verify that this is saving okay, I'm gonna quit out of the simulator, cancel everything, start again by pressing play. And we can see I've got my three items. I learned Swift, I haven't taught physical computing, and I have got my tattoos remove a Pete. If I toggle some of these items again, then quit, then restart, my data is persisting. This is working magnificently, Swifters. And once again, we had more big learning. We learned to delete data using a swipe actions modifier applied to the element inside of our for each statement. And in that modifier's closures, we used a model context delete function applied to the array element in the for each. And we added a completed toggle using an on tap gesture. And in both of these examples, we applied model context dot save to force a save, which sometimes isn't applied if the simulator is quit. Swifters, you are now devastating in your deletes and tremendous with your toggles. Bask in the glory of your Swift data skills, but we got some more big learning to come. See you soon, you mighty hackers. Keep at it.